So the work on our NTV650 continues. I thought I'd take a little side journey. I was curious to see if the valve timing has been affected by the potentially loose cam channels. And I suppose potentially loose is a, is a bad choice of word because they're not potentially loose. The one that I have checked is loose. If it's loose enough to be the problem, that's a different question again. But I thought it'd be interesting just to see The cam shine if the cam timing had been affected by these loose items. So that's what I'm looking into now. I'm going to take this the leading cylinder, the cylinder number one I guess it is, I'm going to take the rocker cover off that one which is kind of inaccessible you may have noticed and then I'm just going to have a look and I'm just going to see if the cam timing is where it should be now luckily cam timing is not rocket science on these things because there are timing marks so it's easy to check to make sure that everything lines up and of course, if it doesn't line up, then it would explain the, the engine's lack of ability to rev, which is something it does suffer from. Now, I'm not really sure how I'm going to get this assembly out of there. One of those tricky ones, I guess. It see some sort of a mark there on that rocker cover. So, I don't know, maybe somebody's faced this dilemma before. It's definitely a dilemma. Well, how about we leave that loose for now? because it'll probably come out easier once the cover is off. So, removing this might help, it's held on by push pins. That seemed to open things up quite a bit. It's just a dust cover.
cool and sure does look fresh. And that radiator cap looks less than ancient. That's definitely opened the situation up somewhat. Butterfingers. Oh. oh, what's this? Nice, I have another one. Now I still have a hope that I, um, I won't need to drop this engine out. The trouble is, is that the more you pull something apart, the more things you find that need correction. So for example, um, probably end up taking the barrels off this thing. Oh, I should really have a close look at how it's all put together, hopefully we don't. But if that's the case, then we find ourselves looking at pistons and rings and things. Now, it doesn't blow smoke. So, what we don't know doesn't hurt us because they're obviously not worn out. And when we start taking things out and measuring them and finding that they're not quite as pristine as we would hope. <sighs> That's when we end up reconditioning entire engines and the price just blows out. So let's have a look at what we can see. Hmm. Now, yeah. checking the valve timing on these engines isn't particularly difficult. Um, this is the flywheel with the, the cover off. Now, the cover actually forms part of the um, you know part of the equation when it comes to um, checking your valve timing because the cover has a pointer on it. 
but I've taken the cover off just quickly so that I can show you what you're pointing at. And I hope you can see this. What you've got there is a couple of what I would consider hopefully firing indexes maybe. Is that one there? That See where it says F for fire? And then here you've got another one that says uh, T. So rear top. Now top stands for top dead centre. So on the rear cylinder the piston is at the very top of its stroke. So it's as close to the cylinder head as it's going to get. And the connecting rod is straight up and down. So they call that top dead centre. Now there's another index as well down here. And I'm sort of hoping different angles might make these easier to see. This is for the front cylinder. So there's your F again for firing. And then FT for front top. And in front of these is, a, is a, just a straight line. Which hopefully you can see there. Underneath the, at the tip of the screwdriver there. So what these are all about is simply aligning them with the pointer on the crankcase cover. Which we'll slide back on now. And even just locating that is a So, once again, difficult to see. But there is a straight line there and there's also one there and inside on our flywheel they actually line up with the one that says RT and unfortunately it's pretty dark in there so the most you'll probably see is just a, a blurring sort of a an indication that that's where it is so those line marks all line up. The lines on the crankcase cover line up with the line in front of the R, which stands for right uh, for rear top. Clear as mud, probably. Well, just hang on a sec because I haven't finished baking your noodle yet. We've established that the crankshaft in the, is in a particular position. So to check our valve timing, we must make sure that the camshaft is in a particular position. So that's our camshaft there. Sort of attached to this sprocket. And it goes all the way in there and operates the valves. Now, these valves aren't going... Aren't, aren't, aren't loose. The tappets aren't loose. There's no clearance between these and the tops of the valves. So it means that the... the um, the, can, the, the um, state of timing is that it's rocking, so it's basically between the exhaust and the inlet stroke, which is not ideal, but generally when a camshaft or, or a cam chain skips teeth on, on the sprockets, um, it will only skip a couple, one, usually. And I've got to admit that I don't feel that this is anywhere near an estate where um, they the cams are loose enough to actually jump teeth but it's a good thing to check because if it jumps enough teeth um, then valves hit the tops of pistons bend and then we need to take the heads off and see if we can recover the heads and throw away the valves because the valve stems will be bent um, and then source new valves so how we check it if you have a really good look here and I don't know the best light for this. Unfortunately, my camera uh, the, has a little screen on it, but it's not big enough to see these details, sadly, especially when you're as blind as bad as I am. Uh, but there's a line there, and there's another one there. And they actually, both of those lines are level with 
the gasket face, the, the rubber gasket face of the rocker cover. So what that tells me is that this particular cam chain has not jumped. It hasn't jumped over a couple of links and the valve timing is still correct. And I've also checked the front already. This was one of these times where I turned the camera off specifically because there's not much that you would see on the front one. The front one, the, the frame gets in the way. Um, both of them, you've got this bearing cap here and the two bolts there. Um, so, you know, not, not fantastic on the scale of things. But great to see that the cam timing is correct. So I'm going to leave that like that as well. And then just point out our marks again. And hopefully you guys have got a good enough angle to sort of see them. On your own bike, if you've got one of these things, um, you'll, you'll see the same. Obviously, you'll see the marks as plain as day. Um, so it, it's um, just one of those things where I, I guess I'd really like you guys to see them, but it's just one of those tricky ones where you probably can't. Uh, and that's with me. Got I've got full lighting boxes on these and everything. So we've established that the cam timing hasn't changed. What we do have, though, we still have an engine that if we reassembled, it would probably still rattle and it probably still won't rev. And we, we're no closer to finding the cause of this. Um, I guess the next stage is to try and remove one of the cam chain um, tension, uh, tensioning mechanisms and chains and, and just sort of seeing what we can come up with from there. And I'm thinking the front one has some advantages for that, but so does the rear. The reason why I tend to go for the front one more is because we have um, we we have to lock the motor so that we can undo uh, nuts and, and and bolts that go through moving parts. So if we do the front cylinder, um, we can remove the flywheel. And that doesn't affect the ability uh, to lock um, the, the engine using uh, the transmission and the rear brake or whatever mechanism we require. Um, with the rear cylinder to access its cam and tensioners, and this is even assuming that we don't have to pull the cylinders off to get to these items, um, which is a fair possibility. Um, the, the moment we take the clutch off, we lose that ability to lock the flywheel. 